This goes back to 750 million years ago. Um, this is one theory of how the land masses uh, were located. And we're going to follow them through the history. The colors basically mean where the lands end up. I mean, some of this yellow becomes North America. This purple becomes Indian subcontinent. Um, some of this yellow becomes Eurasia. And we've located Iran, which is this, this light blue here. And I'm going to try and follow this on the screen as we move along. It is important to know that we don't know at what time these lands were above sea level or below sea level. We know that they were formed, and you can see Iran is here, right near where Australia is. This is 450 million years ago. 410. Three sixty. See the lands are coming together. This is three hundred million years ago. This is a period they call Pangaea, when almost all the lands of the Earth were connected. Of course, except Iran. That's Eurasia taking form. This is Africa, Arabia, North America. So there's Iran. And Iran is going to touch Eurasia right around 200 million years ago, somewhere near where China is today. Now, this is the point where the Pangaea starts to drift. You can see Africa separating, North America separating. Look, 130 million years ago, Iran becomes an island again. Eurasia is forming, North America, South America, Africa, um, India. South Pole, let's keep going, 100 million years ago, you can see Africa coming up, India coming up, 50 million years ago, 30 million years ago, you can see now 20 million years ago, Iran is pretty much trapped between Eurasia, Africa, and India. This is 10 million years ago, and this is the present position. It is worth it to zoom in and look at Iran from 40 million years ago, near its current position. You can see maybe this is where Caspian Sea will become. It was probably a gulf. This is India, this is Africa and Saudi Arabia. 30 million years ago, 20 million years ago, again, Caspian Sea was probably a gulf before it, uh, Iran pinned it in 10 million years ago. And one of the things to notice is how, when these plates meet, we're going to have mountains. So where Eurasia meets India, Iran, and, and, and these, uh, these islands that are forming what, what's called Europe today, we're going to have an Oregony, a, a range of mountains, Himalayas, the Hindu Kush, Albors, the Caucasus, Urals, and all the way to Alps. This is one line of mountains. We're also going to have where Africa and Arabia meet Iran. We're going to have the Zagros range. And here, another another um, range of mountains to the east. This is very important formation of Iran and we'll discuss this later. And this is Iran in its present position. The red line represents fault lines between plates and, and this again is important because the issue of earthquake is going to come into question. This position from 10 million years ago is also very important because as you can see, when these land masses collide, there's water getting trapped between them. That's why we have Lake Urumia, Caspian Sea, Aral Sea in the north. And, and I believe there must have been other lakes in the south. This is, this is how they're going to get trapped. You see the water getting trapped there. Um, 
we will talk about this. So when these three great plates surrounded the relatively small Iran, we had three mountain ranges, sort of like a triangle form, and the deserts we're talking about are the lowlands that were caught in the middle. Now, if you can see, the Eurasian plate is not going anywhere. The African and Arabian plate is moving northeast and counterclockwise. The Indian plate is moving northwest and clockwise. All this creates the kind of frictions that, you know, uh, created these <coughs> mountains, but it also lifted the whole land mass of Iran high in elevation, together with the deserts. Everything was lifted up. Um, now, the average elevation of Iran is over 3,000 meters. That's two miles high. How did it get to be this high? When any two great plates meet, uh, we get something called a subduction. That's the point where they collide. In Iran, we have three subduction zones <clears throat> along these three mountain ranges. When subduction happens, one of the plates, usually the bigger plate, slips under the smaller plates, in this case Iran, because Iran is smaller than the other three. And what happens is mountains start to form right where they collide. Um, and, but also, you start to get this pressure lifting the smaller plate, lifting it up. Um, by the way, subduction zones are the cause of most earthquakes in Iran. Um, but this is what happens. Uh, let me show you more about subduction. The lithosphere layer of the mantle, the upper mantle, starts to slip under the other plate. It will create mountains, and of course, the friction will create magma and heat and, and, and volcanoes. There are three types of subductions. The first one is oceanic-oceanic convergence. This happens in the middle of the ocean. The other one is oceanic and continental convergence. And the one we're interested in is the continental continental convergence, which is what happened uh, in the case of Iran. A good example of the type of subduction we're talking about is illustrated here. Uh, this is when the Indian plate is subducting and it's going under the Asian plate. And you can see when they start to meet 50 million years ago, the picture on top, they're more or less um, the same, but as the subduction occurs, not only we get huge mountains like the Himalayas, but notice how the Tibetan plate has been lifted and we got a, a Tibetan plateau. This is exactly what happened with Iran. That's why we have an Iranian plateau, because other plates are slipping under it and lifting it. 